This is Concept E Classes and today we'll deal with Chapter 17 of Class 8 Science, Stars and the Solar System. We'll be covering this chapter in two parts. So let's begin Part 1. So these are the topics that we're going to study in this chapter. So in Part 1, we'll first study about celestial objects, the moon, the stars and the constellations. And in Part 2, we'll deal with solar system and some other members of the solar system like meteors, asteroids, comets, etc. Now, if we observe the night sky, we are able to find countless stars. Some may be bright, some may not be so bright. And if we observe them carefully, we can see that some stars, they twinkle. And some objects in the sky, they do not twinkle. And they are the planets. Similarly, the moon is there, which is the brightest object in the sky. Now, all the stars, the planets, the moon, they are called as celestial objects. So, the first topic of this chapter is celestial objects. So, what do you mean by a celestial object? It is a natural body outside of the Earth's atmosphere. The stars, the planets, the moon and many other objects in the sky like asteroids, meteors, comets, etc. which are outside the Earth's atmosphere are called as celestial objects. And the study of celestial objects and its associated phenomenon is called as astronomy and the person who studies astronomy is an astronaut. So let's make some observations of some of the celestial objects and learn about them. So the first celestial body that we're going to study is the moon. The moon is an astronomical body which orbits around the earth and it's our planet's only natural satellite. We'll study more about natural satellite in the next part of this chapter. Now if we observe the moon continuously for several nights, we can observe that there is a change in the shape of moon every day. So sometimes we can observe that the moon is a fully round in shape. Sometimes no moon is seen. Sometimes it's a crescent shape like a sea-like structure. So these various shapes of the bright part of the moon are called as phases of the moon. Now let's understand more about this. Now the day on which the whole disk of the moon is visible is known as a full moon day. Thereafter, every night, half the size of the bright part of the moon, it becomes thinner and thinner. And on the 15th day, the moon is not visible. And this day is known as the new moon day. The next day, only a small portion of the moon appears in the sky and this is known as a crescent moon. Then again, the moon grows larger every day. And on the 15th day, we once again get a full view of the moon. And the various shapes of the bright part of the moon as seen during a month is called as the phases of the moon. Now the time period between the one full moon to the next full moon is slightly longer than 29 days. That is, if you see a full moon uh, today, then only after 29 days we are able to see the next full moon. Now the phases of the moon, they play a very important role in our social life. Because almost all the festivals in India are celebrated according to the phases of the moon. For example, Diwali. It is celebrated at the new moon day. Buddha Purnima and Guru Nanak's birthday is celebrated on the full moon day. Mahashivaratri is celebrated on the 30th night of the waning moon. Eid al-Fitr is observed on the uh, following day of the crescent moon. So, the phases of the moon, they play a very important role in our social life. Now, why does the moon change its shape every day? Let's see. In the last chapter, we studied that the moon is a non-luminous object. That is, it does not produce its own light, whereas the sun and the other stars do. Then how are we able to see the moon? We see the moon because the sunlight falling on it gets reflected towards us. That is, we see the moon because it reflects the light falling on it from the sun. Hence, the shape that we see is that part of the moon on which the sunlight falls. For example, on the new moon day. Here, the moon is lined up between the sun and the earth. Hence, we see the side of the moon that is not lit by the sun. Similarly, in the full moon day. On that day, the moon receives a full light from the sun and it reflects it fully. Hence, we are able to see the full shape of the moon. Now, the size of the illuminated part of the moon 
visible from the earth increases each day after the new moon day so this is a position of the moon in its orbit and its corresponding phases we can see the new moon the full moon the crescent moon and all the different phases now the moon completes one rotation on its own axis and it completes one revolution around the earth we should also remember that the earth along with the moon it also revolves around the sun now let's see about the moon's surface when astronauts landed on the moon they found that the moon's surface was dusty and barren and there were many craters of different size on the moon and it also had large number of steep and high mountains and some of these were as high as the highest mountains on the earth and the moon it has no atmosphere on july 21 1969 indian time the american astronaut neil armstrong landed on the moon for the first time so he was the first man who landed on the moon and he was followed by edwin aldrin so that's all about moon now let's study about stars there is a large number of stars in the sky and they appear to us like small points as they are very very far away the sun is also a star and it is about 150 million kilometer away from the earth so the question that comes to our mind is is sun sun is a star then why does it appear large compared to other stars so this can be understood by a simple example uh if you put place a football near to you it appears bigger whereas if we place a football about a distance of 100 meter away it appears smaller similar is the case of stars the stars are millions of times farther away from the sun therefore the stars appear as small points as compared to the sun the next nearest star to the earth is the proxima centauri it is at a distance of about this much kilometer from the earth so it's quite hard or inconvenient to describe the distance so for that we use a unit called as light year so let's see what is a light year so it is not convenient to describe the distance in kilometer hence we express the distance of objects in the universe in a unit known as light year so a light year is a distance traveled by light in one year we know that the speed of the light is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second thus the distance of the sun from the earth is appeared to be about 8 light minutes and alpha centauri is also another star and the distance of alpha centauri is about 4.3 light years so in short we just have to understand that uh, the distances of objects in the universe is expressed in the unit known as light year and a light year is a distance traveled by light in one year we are only able to see the stars during night why are we not able to see the stars during the day let's see In fact the stars are present in the sky during the daytime also however they are not visible because of the bright sunlight now if we observe a prominent star or a group of stars in the sky for about 2 hours or more we are able to find that there's a change in position of the stars in the sky we are able to find that the stars they appear to move from east to west why is that it is because the earth rotates from west to east on its axis so in order to understand this uh, let's consider an activity if you are moving in a train and it's moving forward uh, we can observe that the nearby trees and buildings they appear to move in the backward direction similar is the case here the earth rotates from west to east on its axis hence the stars they all appear to move from east to west now let's study about a star that does not appear to move it is the pole star it is situated at the direction of the earth's axis hence it does not appear to move let's understand this concept of pole star by a simple activity now take an umbrella and open it now make some stars out of paper and paste one star at the position of the central road of the umbrella and others at different places of the cloth now rotate the umbrella by holding its central road in your hand and observe the stars we can see that the star which is situated at the central road it does not appear to move similar is the case of the pole star as a pole star 
lies close to the axis of the rotation so when the earth rotates the pole star also does not appear to move now the next topic of this chapter is constellation now what is a constellation the stars forming a group that has a recognizable shape is called as a constellation now this is a constellation we can easily identify some of the constellations in the night sky but before that we should first know what a particular constellation look likes and where to look for it in the night sky now the shape of the constellation it resembles objects which are familiar to those of people for example the ursa major it looks like a spoon the orion looks like a honda the cassiopeia the leo major so these all are some of the constellations that can be observed in the night sky now the shape of the constellation always remain the same and the constellation it appears to move in the sky from east to west now let's briefly see each of these constellations so the some of the constellations that can be observed in the night sky are the big dipper orion cassiopeia and leo major so first let's discuss about the big dipper now the big dipper it's also called as the great bear or the saptarshi or the ursa major it consists of seven prominent stars and it appears like a big ladle or like a question mark there are three stars in the handle of the ladle and four in its bowl and this constellation can be seen during summer time in the early part of the night now we can locate the pole star with the help of ursa major let's see how first we have to observe the northern part of the sky and identify the ursa major now look at the two stars at the end of the ursa major and imagine a straight line passing through the stars as it shown in the figure now extend this imaginary line towards the north direction and this line will lead to a star which is not too bright and that star is the pole star hence we are able to locate the pole star with the help of ursa major now the next constellation that we are going to study is the orion now the orion it can be seen during the winter in the late evenings and it is also called as a hunter constellation it is one of the most magnificent constellations in the sky it has seven or eight bright stars the three middle stars it represents the belt of the hunter and the four bright stars it appears as in the form of a quadrilateral now just like how we located pole star using uh, the ursa major we are able to locate the brightest star called as sirius using orion constellation now to locate sirius imagine a straight line passing through the three middle stars of the orion and now look along this line towards the east this line will lead to the brightest star in the sky which is the sirius hence we can locate sirius using the constellation orion now let's study about the constellation called as cassiopeia now cassiopeia is another prominent constellation in the northern sky it is visible during winter in the early part of night it looks like a distorted w or m now the last constellation that we are going to study is the leo major now the leo constellation it lies in the northern sky and it is one of the largest constellation in the sky and it consists of nine stars so that's all about constellations so that's all for part 1 in chapter 17 in part 2 we will deal with the solar system the planets asteroids comets meteors and artificial satellites and in soon for the next session Don't forget to share, like and subscribe if you find the contents useful. Thank you so much. May God bless you all. Take care and bye-bye.